Now, Russia has launched new military drills near Ukraine and in the Crimean Peninsula. Tensions remain despite a flurry of meetings among Russian, U.S., Ukraine and European Union diplomats in recent days in a bid to de-escalate the situation. But the meetings have yet to yield any significant breakthroughs. Our correspondent Stuart Smith reports from Moscow. Another round of military drills on top of military drills already taking place by Russia, this time around 6,000 troops in Crimea, so troops there and naval drills in the Black Sea. If you go to the east of Ukraine on near the Russian border, there are around 100,000 Russian troops, according to Western intelligence estimates. And now north of Ukraine, in Belarus, there are Russian troops there too as they take part in month-long drills with Belarus. We heard more talk, diplomatic talk going on in Europe. Again, how to make sure this does not end up with violence taking place. Both sides, Russia, the West, NATO, nobody says they want war, but we're getting the impression over this week that the European Union countries are trying to provide uh, some kind of solid front as well. The Normandy format is being discussed on Wednesday, where Ukraine, Russia, Germany and France can meet together as a four and try and talk things through. But that has been the case for uh, sort of since 2014 and there haven't been any breakthroughs, so hopes not high for breakthroughs on Wednesday. We heard today Boris Johnson, the UK Prime Minister, talking about how the UK would help support uh, NATO and the European Union. We will not reopen that divide by agreeing to overturn the European security order because Russia has placed a gun to Ukraine's head. A lot of European countries, the UK, the US, are talking about moving troops, military equipment and defences to Eastern European countries, part of NATO. Ukraine is not part of NATO and no country yet has said it would help Ukraine with military support directly in the country by deploying troops. In Kiev, the emphasis seems to be on trying to keep people calm. Preparations are underway to make sure that there are, for example, bunkers, supplies in place should invasion happen. Having said that, Ukraine is not saying that imminent invasion is a possibility. Their intelligence suggests should it happen, it would be in quite some time. That's contrary to the UK and the United States evacuating some embassy staff fearing imminent invasion. We should add again that Russia says that is not on the cards, although it is willing to take what it calls military technical measures should the United States and NATO not meet its set of national security demands. Stuart Smith, CGTN, Moscow. French President Emmanuel Macron said he will seek clarification with Vladimir Putin over Russia's intentions towards Ukraine. Both Macron and Germany's uh, Oslav Scholz stressed their support for Ukraine while discussing the tensions during a meeting in Berlin. The two leaders reiterated Russia will pay a high price if it attacked its neighbor. And Macron claimed he will call Putin on Friday with hopes that it will yield a demanding dialogue. Meanwhile, Croatian President uh, Zoran Milankovic described the crisis as a result of the internal U.S. policies. Milankovic pledged that uh, Croatian troops will not be part of any conflict. He said Ukraine should not become a member of NATO and called for a peaceful solution to the ongoing tensions. Now, the United States has reiterated its warning of a swift and severe response if Russia invades Ukraine. And the U.S. State Department said the response would also be unprecedented, but it added that Washington will continue to support any diplomatic moves to reduce tensions. And U.S. President Joe Biden said the U.S. has no intention of sending troops into Ukraine. But the president has threatened personal sanctions on Russian President Vladimir Putin. Russia has repeatedly denied planning an attack on Ukraine. It says the crisis is being driven by NATO and the U.S. actions.